Hey guys, I uh, just got time for a real quick tip here. Uh, we're changing a whole bunch of components on this Chevy truck. Uh, one of them being the upper control arms. And the point I wanted to mention here is don't be afraid to reuse old fasteners. These of course they come with new fasteners for the studs on the ball joints. And the new ones comes with a castellated nut, if you can see that. And the old one is uh, just a, a basic nut that's got uh, a washer on the bottom that can spin. Now, if we look at, if I can bring a light down here, and if we look at this nut, that's awfully low profile. I don't know how well it'll show, but if we look on the inside, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's only actually two threads, two complete threads on the bottom of the nut, and then a couple threads in the castellation. That's not much. This ain't no little Honda Civic. It is a half ton, it's not, you know, a three quarter or, or one ton, but still, you're basically only trusting two threads to hold your upper ball joint and to boot yeah i'm canadian the we're installing a, a leveling kit right so what that does with a leveling kit and not changing we're keeping the original uh knuckles that means you're now putting more strain on this upper ball joint this upper ball joint's intended to be a follower you know you get guys that uh they, they put lifts in their truck particularly if you have an older style that has torsion bars you know they just crank up the torsion bars get that front end cranked right up sometimes they got some rake on there then they're wondering hey why am i going through upper ball joints so much these are designed to be followers the lowers are your loaded so if you put more tension on here you're you're putting more of a lift then you're putting more strain on here because your angle is much more unless you get a taller knuckle. Um, this, of course, is not very much. It's, you know, uh, an inch or so, inch and change, just to kind of bring the, the front up a little bit. But still, that will be putting more strain on this upper ball joint. You want more than two threads. Hold that. So, even though this is a castellated nut, uh, yeah, we ain't using it. This is going in the garbage. We'll be using the old ones. Thankfully, for our purposes, it's the same thread. So we got that option. You know, and we can do it kind of like a Nissan style. It, it does have a hole for a cotter pin. So we can put a cotter pin through there. Uh, as long as, unless this nut's too, uh, the nut might be too tall, it might cover up the hole for the cotter pin. In which case, you know, hey, we can put a dab of Loctite on there. That's fine too. But we want more than two threads. So you know what? Look at your fasteners. If what comes with the new part is junk, don't use it. Trust your life because you know what? If you get one of these popping out on you when you're going around a corner at a high rate of speed, that would be bad. Trust your life to more than just two threads. Okay, and for bonus, uh, I'll mention one other quick little tip. If you're changing, changing the upper control arm, you're taking these fasteners out, these are the adjusters for a camber and caster. Say you're doing this at home, whatever, you don't have an alignment rack. If you are taking these out, then all you have to do is, uh, it's probably hard to see, but mark them. Mark which one's front, which, mark which one's rear. You know, pay attention to where the bolts go, where the nuts go. Because what, what this is, is on the frame, the frame has a slotted channel and there's a pin that these ride in. So as you rotate the bolt, it will push the control arm in and out. And that's how you do your adjustment. So pay attention to where the bolts go. The bolts go on the inside. The nuts are on the outside facing out. Mark which one's the front, mark which one's the rear. Then all you have to do is where the little uh, where the little dowel goes through here, just take a grinder and make a little grinder mark. Tick there. I use a grinder because you don't have to worry about a paint pen coming off or anything like that. The the grinder shows really well. And then what you do is I'll show you when it goes in. Let's put those down. 
And I'll show you what it looks like if you can see that. Uh, there might be too much glare. But you can see where you're just matching up the uh, your grinder mark to that dowel pin. You do that and you'll be pretty close. Of course, this one came off a little bit. I'll just rotate that when I'm done. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to tighten... You don't want to tighten your bushings unless you're at ride height. But you know what? That works for us because since we're putting a leveling kit in there, we can't do up our upper ball joint nut until we're at roughly ride height anyways. So, you know, because there's so much tension on here, we're obviously not going to use one of those screw stands way over there. We're going to lower this thing all the way down onto a, a jack stand until this is, comes up till it's roughly ride height. You know what, we don't have a drive on hoist. It's not gonna be perfect at ride height, but it'll be pretty close. Because the idea behind that is if you were to tighten these up right now, that's not where the bushings would sit at ride height. So when this went up to ride height, those bushings would be under strain at all times. Well, we want them at the neutral position where they're gonna sit most of the time. That way they don't tear too easily. They don't have unnecessary wear and tear. But yeah, so just mark these guys right here where the dowel comes out to the outside. All you have to do is mark one side of the fastener because the bolt, the bolt has a big channel. So both of these uh, eccentric ears will be in line with each other. So I just mark the inside, put a little grinder mark. And then when I'm tightening them all, I can kind of do a little adjustments to make sure that they're back in place. You know what, if you got these guys on here, those are your locks from factory to lock it in place so it's aligned, uh, so it doesn't slip off while they're working on it. You know, a lot of times when you've had an alignment, in order to do an alignment, you have to take those off. Even, even now, putting it back on, trying to match it up, it doesn't go exactly where it was. So I'll probably break those off too. But yeah, you put a little grinder mark and then it gives you something to match it up to. You only have to do one side and uh, just don't mix them up and uh, you'll be good. So we got some bonus footage here. Uh, different truck, same Chevy, upper control arms, except this one's a little rustier. Uh, <laughs> wow. If you can see that, very, very crusty. These did not move. So much so that it broke the cam plate. Never seen that before. Um, so what do you do in cases like this? The, the brackets that they go into, they're really not that strong. They bend. Once you get a little bit of rust, a little bit of crust on here, uh, you know, it's, what is that? 3 16 if even that. Um, add a little bit of rust, add some age. You don't have that much structural support there. So. I don't really like torching the I don't like torching the control arms here because what happens is these bushings inside the metal collar that's what the bolt gets rusted right to and then not only can you not do an alignment the thing won't move but you can't get the bolt out now one of the ways you can do it is you get your oxyacetylene torch and just torch this right off and then pull it right out and then cut the bolt out. The problem with that is you're dumping so much heat into the, the remainder of the material here that you know what, you could burn a hole through that. And let me tell you, if you damage these brackets, you're in for a bad day. These brackets, that's the frame. So then you're going to a custom fabrication shop to get something put back on there and hope to hell you can align the stupid thing. So. I don't like torching these. So then how else do you get these kinds of things out? Well, you don't really want to smash on them with a hammer because what happens is uh, if this is in the bracket like this, you know, your bolt needs to go kind of this way, right? What you'll end up doing is you'll push it this way until you bend that bracket right out. So this one here stays stationary and this one will just bend out as you're smashing this whole thing with the bolt. That's also not good. You can break the one side, right? So the bolt, if you can see that, the bolt head goes this way, right? So you'd be hitting it this way. The, the, the head of the bolt, 
they both face in. So you'd be hitting this way. So this guy right here, you can bend right out and you can break that. Not a good idea either. So what do you do? Well, eh, eh, the ball joint press. You know what, it's not just for pressing ball joints. The beauty of this, I'll show you. Hopefully, maybe I'll kind of shove this back in there, like you saw. So, let's put this guy back in there. Okay, there we go. That took a little more effort than it was worth, probably. Don't mind that the eccentric's upside down. I don't really care about that. That's beside the point. So, now what you can do to get this out, of course, for this one here, you have to remove the bolt that holds down the brake line and gingerly pull it out of the way and hope to hell that you don't break it. But, the beauty of the ball joint press is then, if we get this around like that, hopefully you guys can see that, but what happens is it supports that bracket uh, on the frame so it can't bend out as you're pushing the bolt out. It'll hold that bracket stationary and the bushing up tight against it so really you're squeezing all that and just pushing that bolt right out. Now, this one here on this side was so crusty that this thing here, as hard as I loaded up on it as possible, it still didn't come out. I still had to go in kind of here at this side of the bolt and wrap it with the air hammer to jar it loose. But you know what? I don't know how else you would have gotten that out of there without destroying everything. Now, of course, you ain't putting those bolts back in, but see that? Genuine parts. You get a new bolt. They're not expensive. $15 from the dealer. Uh, these bolts have been in a million, well, not, not a million, but, you know, uh, decades of these trucks. So hundreds of millions of trucks sold or made, I'm sure. So you can still get them from the dealership. Moog makes aftermarket ones, I think Dorman might. Um, one of the things that, if we get this guy out, and human. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, one last thing too. So what you end up doing, the, the other beauty of this is it places right over the eccentric. So you end up pushing your bolt right out of the eccentric because some of these are knurled to the eccentric. Some of them don't pop out that easily. And this will take care of that so then you can put your new bolt in there. Um, as I was saying about aftermarket bolts, so Moog makes a set um, they do make a set that's greasable. There's a grease nipple on there, so at least you get some grease between the bolt and the, the, the collar of the bushing. That's nice. However, I don't like them. They, they feel flimsy. I don't like the eccentrics on them. The, the eccentrics aren't as big. I don't like the feel of the bolt. I like the factory ones. So, you know, I got new bolts um, and got new, new plates. The, uh, the nuts were fine, so I'll reuse those just because they didn't have them. Otherwise, I would have ordered everything from the dealer. Um, but anyways, the more you know, these guys here aren't just for ball joints. Um, you know, some of the other things I'll use them too for is Chevys. You're taking out the, the Y pipe, right? Well, at the back where the exhaust goes to the intermediate pipe, Behind the white pipe, the intermediate pipe has studs that come forward, right? And you try to take those nuts off to pull the white pipe, to you know, pull a tranny, do whatever. Those studs always break. Sure, you could heat them up. You could heat the nuts up so you could remove the nuts and save the studs. But by the time you go to do the job, the studs are so crusty. There's so little material left on them that they're going to break anyways in, you know, three months down the road. 
So it's best to change them. You know, just change them with bolts and nut. Well, what do you do? How do you get them out? You can't air hammer them out because the exhaust is so flexible and hanging there, it absorbs all the impact. Well, what I do is I put an impact on that nut, break them off, get the Y pipe out of the way, and then I use this, right? It's a press. Put a, um, the bit of the stud that's on the intermediate pipe, I put a socket over that as my receiving cup. Then I put this sucker over there and just push it out. Yeah, <laughs> people coming up front. You'd think this is a shop or something. Come on guys, I'm trying to make a video here. Well, uh, anyways, as I was saying, you know, I use the ball joint for pushing out things like studs, uh, the ball joint press, uh, use it for lots of little things. You know, I, I really wish they made a smaller version, you know, a C-clamp that you could put sizable force on. They're handy. Um, but anyways, I wanted to share this. Thought it was kind of pertinent to the rest of, uh, the rest of the tips that I was making for the, the earlier Chevy. And uh, yeah, you know what? Um, just keep at it. And if you're if you're dealing with something that's that's rough, just try to be patient. Try not to break things, because <laughs> then you're in for a bigger day. Uh, anyway, so uh, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Um, you know, I'm always learning stuff along the way. If you guys got special tips, tricks that work for these kinds of things, or problems that you've encountered along the way on your Chevy or your buddy's Chevy or one of the ones you were working on, you know, just leave a comment down below. Uh, let's, uh, you know, pay it forward. Let's all share and help each other out. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.